Welcome to Taiwan Report News Brief, news and analysis from Taiwan. I'm Donovan Smith. Up today in the program, libraries are booming. Taiwan issues travel alerts. The Global Times again talks war. Taiwan firms are in a PRC scandal. And the KMT now has a new chair. But first up, in the Taipei Times, High Court orders RCA to pay 24 of 246 plaintiffs. The High Court yesterday ordered Radio Corp of America, RCA, to pay 54.7 million NT dollars in compensation to only 24 of 246 plaintiffs, sparking an outcry among former workers of the U.S. company and their lawyers who vowed to appeal the verdict. The judges yesterday said that there was no proof that would clearly establish a correlation between health problems as a direct result of exposure to chemical materials at an RCA plant. It ruled against compensating most of the 246 plaintiffs. This case goes back quite a while. In the 70s, this plant offered good, well-paid jobs for Taiwanese workers, but it turns out that a lot of the chemicals that they were working with were very carcinogenic, and quite a few of the people who worked there came down with health problems subsequently. Again in the Taipei Times, public library visits surpass 100 million for the first time. This is quite interesting. I think that uh, Taiwan's library's booming seems to be rather counter to the trend worldwide, but I could be wrong. Interestingly, the number of e-books borrowed last year grew 46.55% annually to more than 2.55 million. The number of visitors who checked it out printed books also increased 3.98%. In Focus Taiwan, Taiwan imposes travel alert for France, Germany, and Spain. All right, this is in the Global Times. This is a Chinese Communist Party mouthpiece, and they are considered more hardline and not exactly the official line, but it's approved by the Chinese Communist Party. And this was in today's report entitled, U.S. Deal with Taiwan May Trigger... China-U.S. military conflict. Here's the quote. China's determination to reunify Taiwan is unshakable, and the recent situation has made the confidence of peaceful reunification drop dramatically on the mainland as the public feel the people on the island and the politicians generally have a hostile attitude toward the mainland, even though the mainland treats them as compatriots, Song said. However, the demand for a military solution is rising sharply among the public as they see the PLA's overwhelming advantage in the region, and they are furious with the separatists on the island who poison the cross-straits relationship. They are even losing faith in the KMT, which holds a pro-reunification stance. So, if the possibility of a peaceful solution totally perishes, a military solution is very likely, and the U.S. and the separatists of the island must understand, no matter how much money they spend, the result of failure won't change once the PLA launches an attack, he stressed. Moving on in the Taipei Times, editorial, firms land in Uyghur hot water. Some of Taiwan's manufacturing giants and best-known brands found themselves in the international spotlight this week, and not for a good reason. Hanhai Precision Company, include, known internationally as Foxconn, Acer, Asus Tech, HTC, were among the 83 companies named as directly or indirectly benefiting from China's deployment of tens of thousands of Uyghurs as forced labor at 27 factories in nine provinces from 2017 to last year. The more than 80,000 Uyghurs were moved from the Xinjiang region to work in the factories where they were barred from leaving or visit family or practicing their religion and needed to take ideology and Mandarin classes outside of working hours, the report said, adding that the number was a conservative estimate and the real nut figure is likely much higher. This is from a report from the Australian Strategic Policy Institute titled Uyghurs for Sale. On to the big story for today. Focus Taiwan here is reporting legislator Jiang Jitsun, or Johnny Chang, has ele was elected KMT chairman. Chang received 84,860 votes, while his sole opponent, former Taipei Mayor Hao Longbing, garnered 38,483. So this means that 
Johnny Chang basically crushed Hao Long Bin. Now to go on, he says, quote, I will settle the assignment of key positions within the party and implement my campaign slogan, KMT Redesign, at the earliest possible time, which will involve the reform of party affairs, adjustment of party direction, and cultivation of new talent for the party, he said in his victory speech. He vowed to focus more on local-level work and restore the lost glory of the KMT by furthering democracy and defending the country. Voter turnout in Taiwan and its outlying islands was 35.85%, with 124,019 voting out of 345,971 eligible voters, compared with a 58.05% in the 2017 KMT election in which about 276,423 out of 476,147 cast ballots. Now, obviously, with the coronavirus going on, you can see why perhaps the vote count was down. Plus, this is just a by-election. It's it's not a election for a full term. However, it's worth noting that the number of voters is draw the number of eligible voters is down from four hundred and seventy six thousand to basically three hundred and forty six thousand. That's a big drop in the number of members. Now, moving on to some local press here. This is Yahoo. And uh, there's a couple of interesting things I found in this article. So right now, Johnny Chang, at 48 years old, is the youngest ever elected KMT chair. So that's important. Now, it says here in this article on Yahoo News, it asks the question, so why did he win? Well, it goes on to say that the, the answer is simple. And it says right here, in the twenty after the twenty twenty big election loss, many many party members feel that the party has to be completely changed. That's a pretty good point. Now he goes on to add some other interesting things here. It says that where he the big point where he won is that basically he won the support of everyone who was not the Huang Fuxing, the Huang Fuxing being the military veterans group that's very, very conservative, and that Hao Long Bin is essentially married into a family from. So basically those old, largely mainlander, largely Taipei-based people, they probably did come out for Hao Long Bin. But this is saying here that pretty much everyone else came out and voted for Johnny Chang. That's very interesting. All right, well, the the DPP came out and said that they congratulated him, and Johnny Chang sent a message back saying that he hopes that they can all form a united front against the coronavirus. Now, a couple of, as I've been mentioning the last few days, the fact that Johnny Chang won, and won so decisively, I think is quite important. It says that the party members, like that last article said there, they really do want to reform. They've suffered two massive national election defeats, and they really want to get back in power. So it appears that they went, instead of going for their more conservative instincts, which they generally traditionally do, they feel a sense of crisis. And that's what I feel the message is out of this by-election. All right, moving on. How, what does Hoyoe think about this? Now, Hoyoe is the most popular major of figure in the party. And so he is going to, he says here that everybody has their role to play. The mayor has to do the mayor's job. The party chair has to do their job. Everybody just do your job, basically. That's what he was saying. Now, this is interesting because how long Bin is widely tipped as a potential major political power broker in the party, being either party chair or the presidential candidate. So this is very interesting. So let's see. Now, we'll be talking about uh, in the uh, more in the future, or at least I'll be writing about it, about how or will Johnny Chang be able to actually change the party. It's worth noting that he only has a little over a year. The party is hemorrhaging cash, huge amounts of cash. The party has almost no support from people under the age of 40. 
who support issues like marriage equality, which, by the way, Johnny Chang voted against. So he's not going to necessarily win too much there. He's talked about uh, reaching out on the Internet, things like that, social media to try and reach younger people. That may help a little bit. But really what it comes down to is the party has to craft a message which they're going that the public will like. If he goes stronger on Taiwan sovereignty in the face of the People's Republic, that will probably make him more popular with younger Taiwanese. But that means that relations with China and the Taiwan, the Taiwanese-based business people in China, who are major donors to the party and can help solve the party's financial problems, he may lose them. So he's really caught between a series of rocks and hard places. All right, just a few articles to check out in The Diplomat. Joe Biden's record on China and Taiwan. For decades, Biden has embraced the China engagement doctrine and warned Taiwan to tread carefully. Now, though, he seems to have changed his tune. There's been a spate of articles congratulating Taiwan on handling the coronavirus. Here's one in Al Jazeera. Taiwan reigns in spread of coronavirus as other countries stumble. In Taiwan Insight, reaching out to undocumented workers, the best way to contain COVID-19 outbreak. And in Ketagalan Media, this country belongs to all legislator Chambowe's vision for Taiwan. He's from the Taiwan State Building Party. All right, the news goes on. Check in tomorrow for more. This has been brought to you by the Taiwan Report. For more content like this, become our patron at report.tw. Oh, it's that Taiwan girl.